calm seas at dawn, the necessary conditions for small boat crossings, crossings the Prime Minister is trying to stop. 44 people arrived to shore this morning, just like the 3,000 others who crossed the channel this way, this year alone. New powers are on their way, making any asylum claim inadmissible for anyone desperate enough to attempt the journey. This latest plan not yet convincing everyone here in Dover. It ain't going to work because it won't happen. It'll be challenged legally. Um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be Rwanda all over again. This country can't afford to keep taking them, can they? We can't keep... We're paying all our taxes and are they going in the right way? I think this is the main issue, that people are getting fed up of paying their taxes and we're keeping people that shouldn't really be here. We feel sorry for them, but there's France over there and France don't do as much for them, they just want to get rid of them. Once they arrive here, there will be a legal duty to deport them to a third country, though no agreements yet with any EU countries have been made. They'll also be barred from applying for British citizenship ever again. But so far, scarce details on how. I think it's, it's, it's a really impractical idea because what it's going to mean is that every single asylum seeker will need to be detained pending removal. And when you look at what the, the current detention estate and the difficulties that the Home Office is already having with, with um, space in detention centres and so on and putting people up in hotels, it's just going to be completely unworkable. With the Tories' flagship Rwanda policy still to get literally off the ground, where asylum seekers will go after arriving to the UK still being ironed out. While we expect to get the full details tomorrow, a handful of Tory MPs I've spoken to today are already on side. And this may be why Rishi Sunak is so keen to push out his policy so early. It's clearly an issue that appeals to the Conservative base and could stave off a general election defeat next time round. They've taken their time and have I hope got the policy right and we recognise the difficulty, the reason why it was impossible to remove people to Rwanda last year is that a legal challenge under the European Convention on Human Rights blocked it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the government have done to ensure that that doesn't happen again and I'm confident they will have done everything they can. We've got to tackle and prevent these dangerous boat crossings and that also means overhauling the asylum system so you fast track decisions and returns and it means getting a new agreement with France so that you can prevent these dangerous crossings in the first place. The backlog of asylum cases is one this policy won't immediately address. Fact check analysis of Home Office data shows that at the end of 2010, the year the Tories came into power, there were fewer than 15,000 cases waiting to be processed. By the end of 2022, it was more than 10 times that, with over 160,000 cases in the backlog. Tomorrow, MPs will inspect the policy and give their opinion on whether the Prime Minister has solved an issue his party says they've been tackling for a decade. Well, let's get more now from our political editor, Gary Gibbon, who is in Westminster. One of the things that uh, I think Rishi Sunak will be announcing tomorrow is uh, an attempt to take head on one of the criticisms that's been uh, made of the government, that there aren't enough official routes uh, for asylum seekers to seek refugee status in the United Kingdom available to them to apply from third countries. As I understand it, one of the things Rishi Sunak will be saying tomorrow is that he's going to open up some new official routes for asylum seekers to apply from third countries. Uh, that uh, list of uh, uh, relevant countries will uh, be drawn up in conjunction with the uh, United Nations High Commission for uh, Refugees. And uh, quite critically, though, uh, it wouldn't come into effect uh, immediately. Uh, it would be sequenced, and the government will want to wait until it's got the numbers of uh, people arriving by small boats under control before it opened up these uh, new official routes. Another thing about them, uh, though, as I understand it, is that uh, an idea that Rishi Sunak first raised in the summer leadership contest last year that he lost, the idea of a cap on the number of refugees that come to the country in any one year, a cap voted on by MPs, that uh, could be part of the package uh, tomorrow. And one of the things he'll be uh, announcing uh, uh, or the Home Secretary will be announcing and he'll be talking about uh, potentially a bit later on uh, in the day. One other element, 
a lot of people have been saying, well, if you look like you're going to bring in a law like this, a lot of people will uh, charge across the channel uh, to make sure that they're in before the law comes into effect. There'll be a surge. And the government thinks it may have closed off that uh, possibility uh, by backdating the laws to the moment of the introduction of the bill. So effectively uh, from tomorrow or a, a date very imminent, uh, those laws would have effect. They think they've uh, closed off that possibility. The Prime Minister was meant to be having a conversation with President Macron today about more border enforcement on the French beaches. That's been uh, delayed a bit, but they're going to meet in person on Friday anyway. And people in number 10 feel that the protocol deal that the Prime Minister has negotiated will help uh, create uh, an atmosphere with President Macron, which will mean that he is willing to do more work on his side of the border uh, to help with all of this. There could be some British money going across to help him uh, with that. There's been some in the past. Keir Starmer saying all of this uh, amounts to uh, an early ploy by the government to try and win votes in the May local elections. Uh, but the government is insisting this is something that the Prime Minister has spent a huge amount of effort on, gone through in a lot of detail, rather like the Northern Ireland Protocol deal. They hope, as some people said of that, that they can perhaps surprise on the upside in terms of diligence when all this is unveiled tomorrow. Thanks, Gary. Well, joining me now from Westminster is the Conservative MP Jonathan Gullis. Um, you've been saying for years that Brexit would enable us to take control of our borders. Why has your government been so useless at taking control of our borders? Well, I don't think that's fair, Chris. What I think is happening is smuggling gangs are exploiting vulnerable people and economic migrants who want to come to this country illegally because, essentially, they're asylum shopping. They're choosing which country they want to go to when they're already in safe mainland France, and I don't think that's right. I think that's why the Prime Minister has wholeheartedly got my support to make sure he goes as far as he possibly needs to go to make sure we stop the small boats, smash apart the smuggling gangs and do the humane thing which is to prevent people from needlessly risking their lives in the channel. But we didn't used to have this before 2018. <clears throat> this is a relatively new problem. Well, small boats why, is why relatively new, but believe, we have had... believe you? Well, we have had people trying to cross, for example, in trucks, and there was a lot of work done yeah, on the, not, in not the in ports. Boats. Not on boats, no, but obviously the smugglers are looking at so successful why did that ways. Well, I'm assuming that smugglers tried something. It looked like it landed successfully. Obviously, we uh, saw uh, people, therefore, trying to risk it more unnecessarily. We know that uh, a lot of Albanians are choosing to spend £4,500 to come on a small boat rather than 28 quid on a flight because, ultimately, they must be involved in criminality of some sort if they don't want to go past our border force checks. So, essentially, what we need to do here is to make sure that we prevent people from needlessly choosing to risk their lives unnecessarily in the English Channel. We need to make sure that we stop these small boats from launching we need to make sure it's very clear if you come here illegally you will be deported to a safe third country like Rwanda and if we deliver on that then the Conservative Party will show they're serious yeah. whilst the Labour Party it's a big if, still though, isn't it? That's the trouble. I mean it's a big if no, nobody really kind of believes this can work I mean let's just take let, let's take one person let's take someone who's been persecuted and perhaps beaten or threatened with death in Iran they risk their lives they spend lots of money they get to France because they want to get to Britain because they've got family in Britain they make it across the channel in Britain. You pick them up. You send them to Rwanda at a cost of tens of thousands of pounds. They don't like it in Rwanda, so they come back to Britain under a different identity. How are you going to know it's the same person? Well, first of all, Chris, people coming here illegally, we don't even know who they are because they're throwing their documents overboard and we're having to take them at face value when they present themselves to border force checks. Secondly, people shouldn't be choosing in asylum where to go. Yeah, you should you be going know? to the safe. How are you going to you should be going this? to the safe third country, which is what Baroness Scotland, a former Labour minister, famously said time and time again, that people should claim asylum in the face, uh, face, first safe country that neighbour uh, neighbours them, and that's what should be happening. People shouldn't be choosing yes, but how are you going where to they enforce go. this? When you say you'll never get back into Britain, how are you going to know? Well, first of all, Chris, people might well check, but obviously there'll be um, fingerprinting, which could be done. Ultimately, oh, we'll, find out from the prime, we'll find out from the Prime Minister the details of how we're going to do this tomorrow, and I look forward to hearing those details. But he's entirely right in saying, if you come here illegally, you will not be able to claim asylum, you will not be able to claim British citizenship, and we will obviously do everything we can to prevent you coming back here. There is no need to come to the United Kingdom. If you're in a safe mainland European country, a UN founder in France's case, then you do not need to needlessly risk your lives and you can claim asylum there. Isn't the truth that if you want a party that is really going to get a grip on immigration, you should be supporting Richard Tice, Nigel Farage and, uh, and the Reform Party? Because the Conservative Party has just failed year after year to deliver what it promised. Well, no, actually, I think the Conservative Party is the right party to deliver on this, and I'm a proud member of the Conservative Party. And as you know, Chris, someone who's very outspoken 
on this particular issue. And I believe, having had many conversations with the Prime Minister, that he's been across the detail. He's been keeping me up to date with progress. Obviously, I look forward to seeing the full detail tomorrow. And we'll back him in going as far as he needs to go to make sure we deliver on this priority. Let's not forget that the Prime Minister's made it clear. We need to halve inflation. We need to grow the economy. We need to reduce debt. We need to uh, cut NHS wetting lists. Yes, and we need to stop the small boats. This is very, very important. The Prime Minister seekers. has my support. And, and, and why you don't want to let asylum seekers into Britain and why you don't have any credibility on that. I mean, well, you know, I do want to... I do you said believe, this a year Chris, ago. That people this should comes come. round every time at sort of election time, doesn't it? And we've got local elections coming up I think that's very unfair, on, and, it, and it, it was raised last year and you didn't do it. And here well, we are again. You still well, haven't Chris, done it and you're still talking about it. We did do it last year. The National Atom Borders Act, a superb piece well, of legislation, which is currently being, which is currently going through the UK legal court system. And ultimately, I believe that what has happened at the Court of Appeal will be backed up in the Supreme Court when it eventually gets there. That what we're doing is lawfully uh, able to be done. And I'm sure the Prime Minister will face similar legal challenges again in the UK court system. And we'll go through that and make sure then we deliver on those priorities. What I am very okay. clear on is we should totally ignore the ECHR's rulings, like we proposed to do in the Bill of Rights because the ECHR should not be dictating yeah. sovereign you want border the party control to break of our the law, and, they, and they said no. I mean, you had... You I at don't least want to break the law, Krish. I actually... And, let's and not they, forget, Krish. And you're, none of your colleagues supported Krish, you on it. Krish, this is very important. The French are, uh, have double the derogation rate of the yeah. UK government. So what I'm saying is in this particular area, which is border control, which is about taking but back control of our laws and our borders, Sunak let you down. we should be doing it. Rishi Sunak didn't vote anything down, Krish. It was a backbench vote. Obviously, Labour members were whipped to vote he against. Didn't vote Keir, Keir Starmer himself showed that he was against uh, taking back control of our laws and our borders. So despite all the tough rhetoric in the Telegraph to try and portray himself as a Brexiteer, he showed himself as the pro-EU second referendum supporter that he really is. Just like when he supported Jeremy Corbyn and binned him after he lost the election. Just like when he had the ten pledges to become leader and binned them after he became leader. Yeah, the man's right. a flip-flop and I won't be now. taking... I won't be listening to Mr Flip-flop any Jonathan. further. Jonathan Gowers, thank you very much for your time. Thank Jackie. you.